Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of Awaken Geekdom here on YouTube. My name is Giovanni Menendez and today we're going to be continuing our Aquaman talk here on this very channel. We're going to be covering the later portion of Dan Abnett's run, so stay tuned. Yeah, everybody, welcome back. Previously, actually a year ago, I talked about the, I think it was a year ago, I talked about the first four trades in Abnet's Rebirth run. Now, if you're not familiar with it, and if you you don't mind spoilers, then please do continue watching. If not, go ahead and watch that first video where I talk a little bit more in depth about uh, the origins of that run. Of course, it started in the New 52 and et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, this uh, run continues after what was the start of the whole uh, civil war in Atlantis, where our main bad guy, Corum Wrath, took over after the events of the first three volumes, where, you know, there was that um, embassy attack on a, uh, the Atlantis embassy attack, I should say, with all the diplomats and all that stuff, eventually escalating into a war between Atlantis and the U.S. government. Uh, Superman stepped in. One of my favorite moments from the beginning run was that confrontation, that talk between um, Aquaman and, and Superman. And I loved how that reflected the character's status uh, from a meta standpoint with the uh, fandom. I loved that scene so much. That was easily my highlight of the beginning portion of Atnet's run. Now here, we continue that adventure with the... Uh, repercussions of the civilian uh, of the Civil War I should say. Mira has left uh, the Kingdom of Atlantis, Aquaman is presumed dead, and there is talk about this ghost or as you know they're, they're referring him now as the Aquaman, there is talk of this ghost that is leading a revolt against Coram Wrath and we find out that yeah it is Aquaman. We previously had the introduction, the uh, a rebirth introduction I should say to Dolphin so that is where we leave things off in volume 4 beginning with uh, volume 5 obviously our two uh, lovebirds here reunite uh, Mira gets uh, she loses her ability to breathe underwater under a magic uh, spell a magic attack and so it is a race uh, to save her life you got the character of Aquaman trying to continue this revolt against uh, the, uh, the tyrannical Coram Wrath and his uh, regime that he started in Atlantis. We also have uh, all the different side characters that have been introduced in this run. Uh, Volko is also a key part in this story as he is trying to get all of these sea listers involved and, and you know, build a... a big enough army to take down uh, Corum's, uh, you know, the official army that, that Corum has. That means going down to the trenches down below, and I'm, I don't mean the actual trench, but to the uh, innermost circles in Atlantis to recruit uh, what would be um, uh, sort of like these mutant hybrid, uh, mut like these mutated hybrids, I should say of uh, sea creatures slash Atlanteans uh, to get them involved. Now, the first volume, volume uh, that I'm talking about, Volume 5, The Crown Comes Down, has art by uh, Ricardo Federici, and for the most part, I really loved it. This, to me, is the answer uh, to Marvel's Isat Ribic and his magnificent, glorious work on Jason Aaron's Thor. Well, the equivalent to that we get um, Ricardo doing fantastic work here on Aquaman and it looks breathtaking, it looks beautiful, realistic and just a great sense of, uh, of depth with these characters as they are uh, roaming around uh, trying to stop uh, the main bad guy while also 
you know, trying to earn the people's trust so they can win back the throne, if you will. Now, Aquaman, in this story, he refuses to return to uh, being a monarch, and instead, if they succeed, it will be up to Mira to become the queen of Atlantis and continue uh, the succession and all that stuff to get Coram Wrath out. So, that's sort of the setup. Uh, one of my complaints, by the way, is that Volume 5 is pretty short. It only has issues 31 to 33 and an annual. The annual is not totally necessary, but it's actually pretty cool. It's like 20 years in the future. It's a different uh, sort of what-if timeline. And I thought that was really, really awesome uh, to see something like that. And I think that was drawn by... Um, uh, Max Fimuda, I, I think I said that right, or, or, or maybe not. He was the guy that did the art in uh, Fumara. Sorry, <laughs> Max Fumara. He did the art in uh, the Mignoloverse for uh, BPRD and stuff. Uh, so I really, really enjoyed reading that. That was awesome. But one of my complaints is that this is really tiny. This is only three issues of Aquaman material. If you are not counting the uh, if you're not counting the uh, annual that I just mentioned. Uh, after that, it sort of leaves in a cliffhanger with the status quo that I just mentioned. And instead of picking volume six, you kind of have to read this book. This is Mira, Queen of Atlantis, Mira's first ever solo book. It is written by Dan Atmet and it is drawn by uh, Lan Medina. And this, um, unfortunately, it is part of the bigger story. It's not a standalone title. You have to read it before reading uh, the final volume of the arc, uh, Volume 6, Kingslayer. So, yeah, you do have to read this in between. It's not totally necessary, but if you want to read Mira, it has to be before you finish uh, the Abnet um, Civil War stuff, if you will. <laughs> the Atlantean Civil War. And uh, for the most part, Mira's book is pretty freaking fantastic. Her title is well written. I love how uh, strong and, and determined the character is. Mira is one of my favorite comic book characters. And I think Abnet, you know, he knows the character pretty well. He's written Aquaman for a few years now, so he knew what he was doing when he did this. And it has fantastic art from Lan Medina. Really pretty artwork. I mean, look at this. This is pretty spectacular. Fitting for our lovely queen and... You know, here she is in all her splendor, doing her thing. Uh, basically, uh, the return of the queen, as it says right here. Back in the New 52, um, after Throne of Atlantis, uh, Ocean Master was captured and he was imprisoned in um, Bel Reve, Bel Rev, if I remember correctly. He escapes during, uh, I want to think it was Forever Evil during that time period, and he befriends a single mother uh, with her son, and that's who you see here, a pacifist uh, ocean master who has fallen genuinely in love with this uh, character and has formed a loving relationship with her and uh, her son which was really cool to see and it added a more interesting layer of somebody that was very totalitarian very strict and very phobic when it came to uh land dwellers as as they like to say so it was really interesting to see that dynamic um to be you know that dynamic to be explored i should say in a very uh, cool way with him falling in love with a uh, land dweller <laughs> So when you start reading this book, if you've not read the New 52 stuff, you're going to meet an Ocean Master that is changing, that is, he's different. He's going through an evolution of sorts, and I really, really appreciated that it was something fresh and unique to do with the character that actually, yeah, several other versions have tried, uh, but I thought that this um, particular one, uh, Abnet did a good job of reminding us who ocean master is and his legacy but also opening the door for change for potential change so that the book is great and uh at, at the end of this it sets up the finale if you will of the uh, war for uh, the throne 
with volume six Kingslayer. This also has like four issues, uh, which is a pretty small trade um, in my opinion, but it has amazing artwork, stellar writing, and uh, actually one of the things that people criticized uh, this run for, and I will get to it in a little bit with the negatives, is the pacing because it it's a long story that I think could have been trimmed down a bit. I think it could have been shorter, especially if you were reading it uh, with singles uh, monthly. It would have been really annoying because it the story drags. When you read it in trades, it picks up a lot better and faster. So I think the pacing could have been a little bit better. But really, Abnet does what an Aquaman writer, what I wanted a writer for this title to do, which was to explore the inner workings of Atlantis. A lot of writers through the decades have focused more on Arthur's um, position as a Justice League member and as a world hero, and vaguely exploring the duality of being from both uh, land and sea. Yes, they do feature him as the king of Atlantis, but it's more focused on the stuff that happens in the surface world and the tension between the two places, you know? Different countries, I should say, sorry. And Atlantis. Uh, whereas this, almost all of it, I'm gonna say, what, like 80 or 90% of it is down below in the depths of the sea, so I really appreciated that and gave us a new window into the inner workings of the city and it introduced several new characters, several new concepts. We saw like the school of magic uh, being explored, the widow tower thing and the selection of a new queen, all of that inner working and, and, and inner workings of a monarchy and all that stuff. That to me is the most exciting thing about this run. Also, you're giving us a really cool kick-ass version of Aquaman that at first was a mix of old school and then it was clearly inspired by Jason Momoa as well, so you incorporated a bunch of elements to create what I think is a, a satisfying version of the character that people can enjoy. I still think New 52 is a good entry point, and if you like that, go to this instead, because the Rebirth stuff, even though the pacing is a little bit off, it's still a worthwhile story about um, xenophobia, the fears of war, succession, uh, um, uh, dual roles, and and how uh, you know obviously uh, the, a character of like Mira taking control of a city that mostly wanted a king. So you get to see um, stuff uh, involving that, and I think for the most part, Abnet does a fantastic job really accessible really cool the art in it is fantastic like uh, I've, I've briefly shown it just has wonderful colors wonderful art by um, uh, Federici and seriously look 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 at this with the uh, tones and the waters and stuff it just okay this is a, no I can't show that that's a spoiler but yeah stuff like this just looks really good in page you're holding it and uh, the villain Coram Wrath I think that also uh, might be a slight negative in my opinion um, there is a complexity to the character because he comes from the barracks he comes from deep down below where people are treated almost slave like and his rise to power to fill a void in his heart that he could not do as he was growing up with his uh, with the relationship of his father which his father believed in the system and what he was doing uh, working the stones and all that stuff so I do believe that Coram Wrath he is a worthy villain for the pantheon of uh, Aquaman um, characters I just think at a certain point they unleash a force within the book and the character just spirals into generic territory for me it could have been a little bit better but overall I'm satisfied and I think it was an amazing story and the resolution for Coram Wrath was really good I really enjoyed it regardless of the way the characters was, was written 
uh, for the final uh, arc. He started one way, it got interesting, and then it ended in another way. Let's just say that. If you've read it, I think you know what I mean. So yeah, great, great arc. Uh, fantastic uh, writing and world building by uh, Dan Abnett. He really got it down, and I will, I will miss it. Uh, I will genuinely miss uh, what Abnett did, which started in the New Fifty Two. Basically, his story, you know, there's still more to, to tell because it continues onward into um, other books that I'm going to talk about. But for the most part, this is like the meat and bones of his run um, where you do get to explore this new side of, of Aquaman. Later on, after that story ends, we get this Aquaman and Suicide Squad Sink Atlantis where... Um, it is written uh, by Rob Williams and Dan Abnett. It was a mini crossover between the two titles. I cannot divulge the info that's in this book because you need to read the others. Basically, something happens that involves uh, the Suicide Squad and the art, for the most part, is pretty awesome too. It's pretty great. I liked it. It's a nice blending of two artists because it was Joe Bennett and Jose Luis. Um, yeah, it, it's it's fun. Uh, it's not the most complicated thing in the world. It's a very simple story that once you start reading it, you could figure out what's going to happen in the end. But it's really it's a it's pretty cool to see a team like the Suicide Squad interact with um, Aquaman characters. So I thought that was uh, pretty well as uh, a pretty fun, well written book. Now the last portion is the um, the crossover with Justice League, uh, Drowned Earth with uh, Aquaman and, and Dan Abnett and Scott Snyder. I'm going to do a separate video on that simply because it is sort of like this deluxe hardcover and stuff. So I want to do a separate video for that to finish off the Rebirth stuff. But overall, fantastic. Uh, a, a worthwhile time if you're an Aquaman fan to at least read these uh, Abnett stories in trade. They read a lot better in trades in my honest opinion. They're wonderful. And you get excellent world building, new elements to explore with the character of Aquaman, Mira, Dolphin, Volko, Corum, Wrath, all these wonderful uh, characters that I love. Um, of course, Ocean Master and all that stuff. So, yeah, I am very much pleased. I thank uh, Abnet for all the wonderful contributions that he did to the wonderful world of uh, Atlantis, and I'm saying wonderful a lot, but it's it's that great, it's that good. I, I genuinely loved it, and I think if you give it a shot, you're gonna like it too, because it's action-packed and pretty fun to read, in my honest opinion. Have you read the entirety of uh, the storyline, uh, Abnet's run in Aquaman? Let me know down below, and if not, uh, what is your favorite Dan Abnett written material? I'm very interested in finding out. Guys, as always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Just type a Week in Geekdom, and I'm there for you. Thank you, everybody, for liking, subscribing, commenting. You guys are the absolute best. I love every single one of you. Blessings to all. I wish you nothing but the very best. I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode. We'll